AL side, we're not meeting tonight due to the weather, uh, but I did want to make a video because today is a very special day, and it was a day I was going to talk about uh, tonight at church, and I was going to mention a few things that we could be doing through this season, and I thought I would just go ahead and just put this out there for our church family uh, to be participating in as we go through the season of Lent, which starts today. Um, Lent, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, you know, 46 days before Easter, so the six weeks before Easter, you take off the Sundays, 40 days before Easter. Um, it's a season that the church for the last 17, 18 centuries has been celebrating as a preparation for this Paschal, this Passover lamb, this crucifixion and resurrection, this Christ event, the Easter event and the the 40 days before that and christians for a long time and i want to throw this challenge out to us i'm participating it in and participating in it myself uh, christians for a long time have uh, chosen th that during these 40 days before easter as a way of preparing and a way of um, anticipation of the christ event and celebration of, of easter um, christians have decided to uh, stop doing something and start doing something else. Here's what I mean, you know, fasting, taking up certain scriptures to pray, um, and all sorts of things that you can do during Lent. Whatever it is that you need to be doing to grow closer to God, to get rid of something that isn't even sinful, but can help you draw closer to God and take some time away from it. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what I'm doing. Um, but I, I am doing something. I will tell you what a friend of mine is doing um, because it's, it's quite exactly what we're after. Um, just a couple years ago, he told me about this, that every Lent for the past 20 so years, um, in his morning coffee, because he drinks coffee every morning, he decides just not to put creamer in it. It's kind of a strange idea, but okay, why would you not put creamer in your coffee? And he says that he lets the bitter taste remind him that... Um, you know, the bitter, bitter taste of, of what sin actually provides, of what it actually gives. And so he, he does that sort of as a reminder of why Christ had to come, this bitterness and what the sin really is and what Christ did through his crucifixion and resurrection and ascension. Um, that's one example. I know another man who, during this season of Lent, you know, there's 89 chapters in the four Gospels. And um, if you read about two chapters a day, um, actually less than two chapters a day during this, these 46 days, these 40 days minus Sundays, um, you'll read through all four Gospels by the time we reach Easter, two chapters a day. Um, so we're not talking a lot, a large amount even of Scripture. That's one thing you can start to do. Um, but whatever it is in your life that um, you want to take a step back from and you want to say, hey, this is something that I'm going to do in a preparation for our Lord's coming um, to prepare my own faith for the experience of Easter as we celebrate what Christ has done. So as we enter in this season of Lent, what we call Ash Wednesday, um, traditionally, I want to challenge us to participate in it. What is it that we can give up so that we're growing closer to God? Um, and, and if you haven't given this up before, I recommend sharing it just with a few close ones, not with everyone, but just with a few close ones, um, and even using it as a way of talking about conversation starter, what your faith is and what you need to be growing. Um, make the most of this opportunity, this scheduled time where we can celebrate and anticipate the Lord's coming. So I just wanted to drop that, and as we're starting the season of Easter already, being snowed in, um, I, I want to invite you to be a part of that this year. So thank you, church. Um, we are praying for you, and we hope that you all stay safe and that the Lord would bless your lives as we conform to his image. Thank you.